hi guys and welcome back to my youtube channel uh, i'm taya sophie on the relaxed b and i'm going to be doing a series about just hair loss my hair loss recovery um still managing my relaxed hair and we'll see whether or not i transition out of relaxed hair uh, just to help me through this hair loss process so stay tuned this video I'm going to talk about um, four of the main triggers that actually impact um, hair loss. Um, the first video that I posted, I talked about some of these signs or triggers that you could potentially have before hair loss starts to happen. So that's the sensations you might be feeling in your scalp. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking a lot more about the underlying causes uh, that would actually lead you to feeling some of those symptoms that I talked about in the previous video. Number one is genetics. I know genetics for some people they're like oh is it really genetics or is it just bad hair practices I am gonna tell you right now <laughs> that I know personally that I don't have bad hair practices um some people might want to say oh it's maybe because I'm using relaxers I've experienced hair loss even when I was 10 years natural I have lost my nape I've lost my crown I've lost different parts of my hair even while I was natural so I know it's not just my hair care practices and I'm one of those people who's actually religious about doing my deep conditioning treatments and all of that so genetics it runs in my genes and i would attest to that because i see it with like my uncles i see it with the aunties it's it's in the genes somewhere where our bodies just use inflammation to fight your scalp um and i would say in my own layman term that is how genetics has actually impacted my hair so number one reason why a lot of us are more predisposed to getting alopecia is just it might be some type of hair trauma that just runs in the genes yes it could also be just hair practices that have been passed on from generation to generation but if you're anyone like me where that doesn't really help you answer the question then you know it just it's in the bloodline it just you're predisposed to the second reason where a lot of us will start experiencing really extreme hair loss that we may not actually take as a serious thing uh but it's childbirth uh going through childbirth going through postpartum is a very life-changing experience physically mentally and emotionally and all three things going out of balance at once um sometimes puts your body into a fight or flight mode and a lot of the times your hair is like the first thing to go when your body is fighting for survival so i'd say childbirth is another reason why people actually do lose their hair i can attest to that because it's happened to me um and i know it's happened to a lot of other women the statistics actually does show that 50 percent of women do experience postpartum hair loss so it's pretty common uh but it doesn't mean that you can't recover from it so there's still hope number three reason that a lot of people neglect um and plays a very big part in hair loss um or just the triggers that will start your hair loss process um is stress and stress management for some people you may or may not have had children but you're still experiencing alopecia um focus on how you're managing stress which is why i talk a lot about hair care being self-care um i know some people see it as work but taking care of yourself and just putting time aside to do something for yourself that self-care process is very very important in managing hair loss um i know people i have friends i have co-workers who would tell me that oh when they used to work on that team uh where it was a very high stress job they would lose their hair people actually do lose their hair from just being in stressful um circumstances it's just sometimes that's how everybody's body would react to being in a stressful circumstance so the older you get the more likely it is to happen um younger people might be able to get away with it a lot more easily uh but the older you get stress starts to show up in different places that you didn't know that they could actually show up and one of those places is definitely your hair fourth trigger that i would say definitely impacts hair loss and is it is so underestimated in my humble opinion is nutrition and hydration yo you guys for a really really long time i had no idea why hydration would be so important with um 
my hair care because i'm thinking i'm putting water on my hair topically why does it need from the internal then i started doing a lot more research and i realized first of all we all know that our body is made up of between 60 to 70 percent water and it actually needs water on a daily basis for survival who would have thought that did you actually know that we could die if we went 72 hours without drinking any type of fluid meaning no fruits nothing that has water 72 hours is the most our bodies can actually survive so when you're dehydrated your body tends to prioritize your vital organs <laughs> so meaning your heart your kidney your lungs your liver like the ones you actually need to be alive um your skin is also a vital organ but I would say it's the last thing it prioritizes, especially your scalp is the last thing it prioritizes in the hierarchy of um, things that need to need to keep you alive, right? So when we're not properly nutritioned, when we're not drinking enough water, um, the vital organs get everything that we're giving it first and the hair is like the last thing to go. I find that dehydration and malnutrition doesn't show up as fast in the hair. It's something that will take a bit of progression before you actually start to see the impact on your hair. Uh, but I would say I was probably dehydrated for a very, very long time um, before I started seeing the impact on my hair, which is which is terrible. Like I would tell you that I would go some days where I wouldn't even remember if I drank a liter of water and which is which is terrible they say you're supposed to even have like eight cups a day and i hear that's like the bare minimum for just survival so if you want thriving hair you should be doing like 80 ounces and above i believe it's like half your body weight in ounces half of your body weight in pounds in ounces is what you should be drinking on a daily basis if you want like number one weight management and also good hair um so water and nutrition underestimated um especially in the healthy hair community but these are very vital um for not only helping you manage the hair that you have in your hair so the quality of hair that you're growing uh but also actually keeping that length retention going with your hair care that covers it for today's video i really hope you guys found this content useful i'm going to be talking a lot more about um hair loss managing my hair loss and um recovering from hair loss obviously because that's the plan is not to stay in ccca the plan is to find solutions test out solutions and share them back with the rest of you to see if it could help you out thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this content please make sure to give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel bye